Well, good morning and welcome. Great to see you. We're here in sunny Bicester. Those who are watching us online, welcome to you as well. Uh, and it would be good, those watching online, if you'd like to just say hello on the chat and then I'll read out those who are with us online as well as those here in person. But great to see you and we have lovely weather here today. I do just have one announcement because the school has very kindly allowed us to be here this morning, but on the condition that we don't go into the performance hall because it's all set up for testing tomorrow and, uh, and they need to get that started first thing. So we've, we've moved a bit over here and, uh, and we don't want to even pop in. You can use the toilets in the block, but don't come through the hall. And that's what we promised the school. It is really good to be back together after several weeks where we've been unable to do so. Um, and we're going to worship God together. And I'll hand over to Alison, who's leading us with the youth band this morning. The youth band has been extended by <laughs> Andy and Matt joining. But we're all youthful <laughs> in front of the Lord. Um, it's good to be with you that are here with us today um, physically and those who will join today online or um, in the coming days since... As we start, I just wanted to read these verses from Psalm 104. We are going to look, I think, at Psalm 104 later today. But hear these words here at the end. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. And then skipping down, praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Let me read that again. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Now, praise comes in many forms. Today, we're going to be talking about um, um, the climate around us and what we can do to take part in preserving all that God has given us and made and so as we listen and as we are active in that, that's a um, way to praise. But in a moment, too, we're going to praise by singing, by offering song to God. Um, but before we do that, I'd love us to just pause and be still together. Now, we might, being still means there's always some sound we hear, and that's okay. Um, I want us to just pause for a few seconds, 30 seconds. And in the quiet, um, maybe you hear a child, maybe you hear the wind, maybe you hear some sports players around us, and just anything we hear, we are offering to God as praise, and just a heart and a posture of praise before we sing together. So just pause with me here, knowing that we are held here by God, And not only are songs that will offer praise him, but the creation around praises him. So we're quiet together, offering praise to you, Lord. So for all the creation we hear and we see and we might feel on our um, skin as we sit here quietly, we give you thanks, God. We pray that as we offer songs to you, you might be praised. We pray as we um, sing to you, we might be encouraged in your presence. And Father, I pray for us that there will be a joyful hope that rises in our offering today. Amen. Um, so those of you who are willing or able, if you want to stand and join us as we sing, um, feel free to. Great. Okay.
Remember now, as your people, the times that you have worked in our lives. We, many of us, long to see you work in new areas, whether it's relationships or situations around us or um, wor world turmoil that we might um, notice and grieve with. Um, and as we wait, we remember the saving you have done the salvation you offer, um, the many times and many ways how you've worked in our lives. And we are thankful for that. You, God, who creates all things, we give you praise. Amen. and with us sing oh praise him hallelujah thou burning sun with golden beams thou silver moon with softer gleam oh praise him oh praise him hallelujah hallelujah
Lord, your people who you've created, we offer you praise. In all of our humbleness and our learnings and our strivings, we offer you praise. In the quiet, we offer you praise. In our questions, in our wanderings, in our wonderings, in our doubt, in our joy, we offer you praise. Encourage us today, Lord, as we gather in praise. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and take your seat. Good morning. The words that we've just heard, hallelujah, God and King be praised. The words of the song call us to praise and we do so now as we share in communion together. We gather at this table of the Lord to recognise the presence of our God and King with us in every aspect of our lives. We gather at this table of the Lord to celebrate life, the life of God in the world, made flesh, in the bl made flesh and blood in Jesus, embodied in each of us, each and every one of us. We gather at this table of the Lord, the woman, the man, the young and the old, the sure, the puzzled, the joyful and the hopeless, the accepted and the rejected, each of us valued equally by God, recognised in the eyes of Jesus, welcomed at this table. Gathering as one body, the very embodiment of the kingdom of God, sharing in the bread and wine of life, reconciled and inhabiting his universe of grace. Let's pray together a prayer of thanksgiving. Along with all of creation, the burning sun, the silver moon, the rushing wind, the stars of the evening light, we praise you, Lord, and give you thanks for our creation and for every good thing which makes our lives not just possible but rich and abundant and complete because of your abounding generosity, your grace and your love. Help us to see your presence and your plan of saving grace for every person even as we look at our broken world and despair. Thank you that through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you have revealed your love for us and your plan for creation so that your light shines despite the darkest and bleakest of human behaviour. We come together now, those watching at home and those gathered around the table here, to remember all that you have been, all that you are, and all that you will be, love and grace abounding forever and ever. Amen. When we look at the institution of the, Lord, the Last Supper, we see its meaning through Jesus' actions of lifting and praising and breaking and sharing. Jesus lifted, let me pour this wine, lifted this bread and this wine so that all could see the abundance of God's generosity for his people. We gather at this meal to lift our hearts to God, to look with fresh eyes and to see all that Jesus did for us. And next, Jesus praised God, the giver of every good thing those good things represented by the food and the companionship and the love at the table. 
And we gather at this meal to praise you, Lord, the giver of life and hope and redemption and salvation. And Jesus broke the bread to show us how he would save us in the breaking of his own body and the spilling of his blood, the result of human cruelty, selfishness, fear, and envy. We gather at this meal in humility and gratitude, aware of our brokenness and the cost of grace. And Jesus shared the bread and the wine, bringing every person to himself, promising to be with us always, present in whatever life brings us. And we bless him for binding us to him and to one another in grace and peace and truth through the sharing of his body and his blood. And as we share, as we prepare to honour that meal by sharing in our own, let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer, which are printed on our service sheets. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Can I ask the servers to go up and, uh, and take your places at the back? The servers on either side. If you would like to take part in bread and the wine then please feel free if you'd rather not there'll be people who will bless you and pray for you and pray with you so do feel free to get up and take part in that and so I invite you to take this bread and this wine symbols of Jesus's last supper lift your heart in gratitude praise God for his faithfulness Eat the broken bread, drink the wine, and share the love shown to you through Christ for all people. Amen.
this point we're going to take some family news it's been a little while t- since we've uh, we've done this together if anyone watching online would like to just quickly text me and we'll read anything out from those watching uh, remotely for, uh, for family news but anyone here like to share any family news this morning it's very quiet at the moment Erin in six days Erin 
That's brilliant. So Evan's going to uni in six days, going to Winchester University. Is it University of Winchester or Winchester University? University of Winchester. Evan, it's fantastic. I know you've got brilliant A-level results or the uh, HND, was it? Fantastic. And yeah. I'm going to pray. Can I pray for you, Erin? And yeah, we'll just pray God's blessing on you as you, you make this huge step. Father, thank you for Erin. Thank you for the way you have led her to yourself, the way she's found you and knows you. And I thank you that as she goes to university next Saturday, that you will be right beside her and with her. And Lord, we pray for this transition. We pray she'll know your peace and your help. We pray for friendships to form quickly. We also pray uh, that she'll have those around her who can encourage her in her walk and journey with you as well. And we lift her before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I haven't got any other news. Anything else from here? Nick? It was Helen and Nick's ninth wedding anniversary on Wednesday. Congratulations, Nick. Congratulations, Helen. I, I hear you did things like play crazy golf, and is that right? I, I don't want to give any secrets away, but what a way to celebrate than play crazy golf for, for your ninth wedding anniversary. <laughs> Great, I think that's it. Um, what we're going to do at this point is um, our children are going to go out to Promised Land. The youth are staying in today because most of the youth are in our, our band, and also uh, we're talking about climate change, so we thought that was really helpful. But the children are going to have a class together, and if you'd like to go over, um, Carolyn, is this right? So we go over just over there, and Carolyn will take you to where you, you're going to go uh, towards. So that worked, Carolyn, up. That's, um, so if children like to go there, you stay in where we are, and we'll see you at the end of the service in about half an hour. And while, uh, while the children go out, Helen's going to come forward, and she's going to just bring some notices for us. said to Leo, just need to get it together, mate. I've got to do the notices. It's all all right now. <laughs> um, notices, as um, Steve said this morning, uh, please could you not go into the hall? Just a reminder, if you go over to the toilets, that we can't go in the hall today. Um, midweek prayers are back functioning again now. We do it online. It's every Wednesday lunchtime from 1.30 to 1.50. Uh, the link is in the MailChimp, so if you'd like to join for midweek prayers for 20 minutes, then we'd really love to have you there. Um, we will be here for our services for the next few Sundays now. Uh, we'll be outside if we possibly can. Uh, if, we, if the weather doesn't allow us to, then we will be able to go back into the hall. But we'll try and stay outside for as long as we can, because it is the safest way. So if it looks dodgy, remember to bring your jumpers and your raincoats. Uh, there is prayer ministry this morning, as always. If you need prayer for anything, if there's uh, things going on in your life that you want to share with someone and to, to bring before God, then give Stephen a text and somebody will arrange to contact you and to pray with you. And that applies this morning, but it applies any time, really. If you ever need prayer, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we don't have any other notices this morning that I'm aware of, unless anybody else knows of any. So... Um, we can always catch up towards the end of the service. If there's anything urgent that we don't know about, let us know. Thank you. Um, we also have, uh, have people here to pray as well. So if you'd like prayer and you're here this morning, um, I suggest if, if we just go over there so we're a little bit out of the way and there'll be people available to pray with you here this morning as well. Well, we're coming to look at, at God's word together. Um, let's, uh, let's just pray and, uh, and ask the Lord to speak to us as we give him this time to hear his voice. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, it is a light to our path. And as we meditate on your word now, we pray that we will hear your voice, but also, Lord, help us to respond to you in a way that most glorifies you. That's that in the name of Jesus. Amen. I should also say, um, we have uh, people on chat this morning. Uh, certainly Jim and Laurie are there. I know we've got the Linden Lodge posse who watch us week by week, so welcome to you 
and it's great to have you with us as well. Chat is quite quiet this morning, so, uh, um, but those are the people who have said hello to us all. Well, it's 56 days until the COP26 summit begins, the UN Climate Change Summit, uh, summit in Glasgow. The summit is widely understood to be a key moment for global leaders to make substantial changes to address global warming. In the past few weeks, we've seen the devastation caused by Hurricane Ida, a Category 4 hurricane with sustained wind speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. And following that, we had torrential rain. Uh, you might have heard that story in New York, where three inches fell within an hour last Thursday. There have been horrific wildfires across our globe, perhaps most notably, notably in Greece just a couple of weeks ago, on a scale barely witnessed before. And whilst it's been hard to believe in the UK, temperatures have soared across Europe in August. There was a new uh, European record high of 48.8 degrees Celsius in Sicily just a couple of weeks ago. Now, we cannot conclusively say these events are caused by global warming, but we're told by scientists such events are more likely to occur more regularly as global temperatures rise. Oxfam say that the number of climate-related disasters have tripled in the last 30 years, and more than 20 million people a year are forced from their homes because of climate change. We've known that adding carbon dioxide to the atmosphere increases temperature since physicist Eunice Foote discovered this. Anyone know what date this was discovered? I was thinking maybe the 50s. It was actually 1856 they discovered that this was the effect of adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Current predictions are for a one and a half to two degrees Celsius increase in global temperature, which according to Tear Fund would result in droughts last lasting twice as long, 116 million more people struggling to get water, four times as many tropical cyclones, and 12 million people flooded in coastal areas. Tear Fund writes this, as the world's governments build back from the pandemic, their promises to act in the best interests of people and the planet are not stacking up. We are still on course for catastrophic global temperatures, temperature rises that will put millions of lives at risk. And some are predicting that actually it will go way beyond that one and a half to two degrees Celsius rise and result in even greater devastation. Let me read some of Psalm 104 to us. It talks about God's creation. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. The Lord makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted, there the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the hyrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons. And the sun knows when to go down. You bring dark darkness and it becomes night. All the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. And then people go out to their work, to their labor until evening. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. The, a psalm, one of many psalms, one of many bits of scripture that reminds us that God is not only the creator, 
but the sustainer of all that he has made. He has made things good. In fact, we read in Genesis chapter 1, in that account of creation where it goes through those six days of creation, that, that God says, it says, the Lord looked at what he had made and it was good. And then it says, the Lord looked at what he has made and it was good. And then it says, the Lord looked at what he had made and it was good. And then finally, the Lord looked at what he had made and it was very good. And the word good, I've suggested this before, I, I think actually probably means more about it's functioning well, it's working, it's flourishing, ra rather than being some sort of moral statement or moral understanding. God takes what are the basic elements of his creation, and, and in the very first chapter of Genesis, the very first verse, he, he creates everything, but they are formless and empty, and then he starts to bring fullness and purpose to his creation. He fills it, and he brings it to, to order. He brings it to, to flourish, to bring life, to work well. And as we read on in Genesis 1, we, we find that the purpose of humankind is there defined. It says, so God created, this is Genesis 1:27. God created humankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. What he calls us to do is, is to join him in his task of bringing creation to its fulfillment. To bring it to order, to enable it to work well. As, as he does in the first six days of creation, actually we are joined to call in alongside him in that task of helping creation to flourish. And so we are to be co-creators with God. That's our calling as human beings. Not to use or exploit the resources of the world simply for our own benefit, but working in harmony with the Lord so as to enable creation to reach its fulfillment, enabling it to flourish, and therefore, as it flourishes, to bring glory to God. So that as it says later on in the psalm we read, it says in verse 31, May the Lord rejoice in his works. May it bring him glory. May it bring him pleasure. The difficulty is we've not done this. As we look at our world today, we see many ways we've damaged the beautiful gift God has given to us. The ways we've abused creation through our lifestyles, our demands, and our overconsumption. Even some would, would say that we have pushed it to breaking point. In Romans chapter 8, Paul writes about creation being subject to frustration. It says this, this is verses 20 and 21 of Romans 8. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. It goes on in the following verses to say, creation groans for liberation as if in the pains of childbirth, longing for the fulfillment of its purposes in God's plan. See, rather than use the gifts God has given to us as human beings, the gifts of wisdom and knowledge and science, uh, the things that God has graciously given to us so that we could help creation to flourish, we struggle not to act selfishly, not to live greedily, not to exploit creation for our own ends. And so creation remains frustrated, not able to do what it was envisaged to do because we have not fulfilled our calling. We've filled our seas with plastic pollution. We've destroyed habitats, causing species to become extinct at record rates. We've emitted enormous amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere despite knowing the damage we are causing. And the consequence of the damage we inflict upon God's creation is most severely experienced by the poorest in our world. Tiffon share one story, and that's of a woman called Orbissa. Orbissa is a 35-year-old mother who lives in the Afar region of Ethiopia. A few years ago, Orbissa could rely on the rains, now, because of climate change, they are far less predictable. So she walks up to 10 hours every day 
to find water for her family to drink. Ten hours every day to find water. Her livelihood depends on selling livestock, but drought has killed nine of her ten cows, and she's lost nearly half her goats too. The stark reality is that Obisa is paying the price for emissions, which mostly have been generated by developed nations like ours. She said to Tear Fund, We used to get rain every four to five months. The area was very fertile and green, but it hasn't rained for six months, and I don't know when it will next rain. I feel worried whenever I think about the future. Around our world, millions of people like Obisa are being pushed into poverty because of climate change. In 2016, the world, world hunger, for the first time in a decade, started to increase. The world had been doing well. The millennial goals had reduced world hunger. But in 2016, it started to increase for the first time. And it's actually continued to increase every year since 2016. And, and the reason for that is thought to be climate change and conflict. And the point is that climate change has exacerbated the risk of conflicts. Conflicts happen and keep happening across our world over and over again, but the climate change effect of that has meant that the conflict has had even more devastating effects by those caught up in poverty and hunger. Romans 8 not only talks about the groaning of creation, it also talks about hope. It talks about hope of liberation. Let, let me read these verses again from Romans 8. It says, It was subjected in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. The, the hope it talks about in that passage is the hope we have because of Jesus, because of the coming of Jesus. And, and what Jesus has done is he has enabled us to actually fulfill our calling. He, he's, he's freed us as human beings. He has saved us and redeemed us. And actually, rather than living selfish lives, we are now able to align ourselves, to, to live as God always intended us to live, to bring glory to him and to fulfill our calling because of Jesus, because of his, his forgiveness and his redemption offered us in the cross and the resurrection. God hasn't given up his purposes for creation, but what he's done is he's brought a solution through the coming of his son that one by one we might align ourselves to him and start to fulfill the calling that God has placed on our lives. In Colossians 1, verses 19 to 20, it talks about what God has done through Jesus. It says, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. This all things, it's God's purpose in the cross and in the resurrection was not only for human beings, it was actually for the whole of his creation, all things. The whole of his creation might flourish through what Jesus achieved on the cross because actually we now start to respond and to live as we're meant to live. We're now free to do that and we can respond as God always intended us to live. And so for Christians, care for the climate isn't only about sustainability for the future generations. It isn't even about our duty to love our neighbors and our neighbors around the world. There is that side of things. Yes, we should do it because we have a duty to those who live across the world, those who are most adversely affected by a rise in the global temperature. But actually, I would suggest that, that the main reason for us caring for the climate as Christians, it's about ourselves uh, aligning to God's creation purposes, about us living the life that God called us to live as human beings, about joining in God's plan that his whole creation might flourish, that all things will be reconciled uh, in Jesus to himself again, that we might join in him in enabling creation to flourish and to glorify God as it does so. It's about joining him in his plan to reconcile all things to himself. There are many ways we can respond to this, and, uh, and many ways we should respond. Many things we can do. We can reduce our use of plastic and our waste of plastic. We can recycle more. 
we can reduce our carbon dioxide emissions. Uh, according to Ipsos Mori, uh, half of Britons intend to reduce the amount they fly for holidays post-lockdown. We can campaign. Some of us have done that. Uh, we can campaign for change, for the governments of our world to take these issues seriously. We can reduce our consumption of meat. These are all ways, and there's lots of other ways that we can respond, and I encourage you to think about those things. But I just suggest two things this morning, two particular ways that we can respond together. And the first one is this. It's to commit ourselves to pray for this climate change conference. This is a huge conference in the history of humankind. This could shape the way the world is going to be in the coming 50, 100 years. And I think as Christians, we need to respond by praying for it. There's one way that you can do this, and I, I say this because I, I trust Tear Fund. They're a good organization. You can sign up to uh, Tear Fund to a, a, a weekly. They, they send out prayer pointers, and they're going to do this in the next eight weeks before uh, the COP26 conference. And just sign up to them, and they will send you a prayer pointer each week and then a reminder just to pray for that conference and I encourage you to do this. If you would like to do this, the number's on the sheet now. So um, why don't you get your phone out if you'd like to do this? If you don't want to do it, you can get your phone out and play a game while we do this. That's fine. No one will know. They'll think you're signing up, so there's no embarrassment about that. And all you need to do is text uh, in capital letters, pray, to this number, 07916 874 441. It's on the service sheets at home. It should be on the screen for you. And if you want to sign up, and then you'll get... Uh, an alert every week for the next eight weeks, um, and they will tell you. If you want to stop doing that, you just type stop to the same number, and then you'll stop getting those alerts. And I trust here, Fund, that they won't misuse your number in any way. They're a good organization. I'll just give you a moment to, to respond in that way. And people at home as well, that's on your screen. Um, if we could just put that in chat as well, just so it's there once, once the screen goes down in case people haven't quite got that number. And a, a second way that we could respond, um, there is something called the C Climate Coalition Declaration. Uh, and this has been formed by over 140 organizations, including Oxfam, including Christian Aid, including Tear Fund, including BMS, uh, also including, if you're interested, the National Trust and the Women's Institute, so some good solid organizations there. Um, but actually what they are doing is they are asking as many people as possible in the country just to say this is an issue that is of interest to us as people of the country. And it's a petition that goes to uh, Boris Johnson. It's addressed to the Prime Minister. And if you want to sign this, and again, do this now while we're talking. If you'd like to sign up, I signed up this week. Um, you do need to give your personal details, but we'd, I'm suggesting we do it through Tear Fund, so we, we have a trusted organization. Um, if you Google Tear Fund Reboot Declaration, or you can just use the, um, uh, the link that's in the, the notices, and then you need to fill in, you've got to put in your personal details. If you don't want to receive any information from them, don't tick the boxes, you'll be, you'll be fine there. As you have a look, if you'd like to sign that, I'll, I'm going to read what the declaration says. It says, Dear Prime Minister, the time is now to lead the UK towards a healthier, greener, fairer future. Ahead of hosting the United Nations Climate Summit in Glasgow in 2021, we can build back better together if we leave no one behind by increasing support to those most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and by scaling up investment in renewable energy in developing countries. Unleash a clean energy revolution that boosts jobs across the UK, making our transport, power and housing fit for the future. Protect, restore and expand our green and wild spaces, allowing nature to thrive, taking carbon from the air and boosting health. The UK must lead the world by ensuring our recovery gets us on track to net zero emissions and limits the rise in global temperatures to one and a half degrees Celsius. Our best chance of building a resilient economy goes hand in hand with tackling climate change. We are ready to play our part, and we call on you to join us. That's what the declaration says. And if you're happy to sign that, then at home, if you're happy to sign that, then please do so. The more voices sign that, the more the government realize actually what, what 
are people interested in our country? And then the more power they have to actually put those things through and to make, legis make uh, policies that, that do make a difference to these issues. Some of you, I know, will want to be far more radical than this and will call on far more radical action. And that's fine. There's plenty of places you can go there. And I encourage you, if you, you sense that, then to go ahead and, and there will be other campaigns that are available to sign up to as well. We're going to respond as well, just as we, uh, we think about these things in prayer. And Cathy's going to lead us in our prayers this morning. So please join me in prayer in response uh, to Steve's sermon. And we just want to begin by thanking you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to speak with you, pray with you, pray together, and for the assurance that, we are, that you hear our prayers, that we are heard. Loving God, let us pray for the citizens and governments of our world to act to end the damage we are doing to our planet. Loving God, thank you for the amazing world you have created. Thank you for its beauty and the abundance of life within it. We repent of the way we have abused this earth. The poisoned rivers, the toxic fumes, the polluted seas. The species we have made extinct. Forgive us, Lord. We pray for an end to man-made climate change for the prevention of a disastrous temperature rises, and we ask for nature to be restored. We pray that governments and corporations will take swift and decisive action, that everyone will see your creation as a gift to be cherished, not a resource to be plundered. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Let us now move on and pray for our wider world. Let us pray for Afghanistan. We ask that you help the people of Afghanistan walk through this terrifying and difficult time. Protect them and let them feel the comfort and peace that only comes from your powerful presence. Let their leaders' hearts be softened and want a just, fair, tolerant and nurturing society for the people to live in. We pray for those displaced and forced to seek refuge in other countries. Be with them, Lord, and help us to respond by sharing our spiritual, practical, and financial resources. Let us all be generous with what we have. We pray for Christians in Afghanistan, Lord. Help them to stand strong in their faith. Let them be assured that you are with them and that their ultimate home is in heaven with you. Loving God, Again, we ask that you're with those who have COVID, those living in fear of COVID. Let all know you are with them as they suffer. Let all have access to medical care and vaccinations. Please be with our NHS as they face another winter fighting COVID. Sustain them, Lord. Give them energy, health, emotional strength and the resources to endure. Let us support them faithfully with our prayers. Loving God, we ask for your continued blessing for the ministries we at OBC support. We ask that you bless, sustain and resource David, Preeti, Amy, Christine, Prince and Sujatha. Please, Lord, help us to keep them at the forefront of our hearts and minds. Let us be faithful in our support for them. Loving God, we lift our own fellowship to you. Thank you for those who have served us faithfully during this time when we could not meet in person. We ask that you bless and protect the many weekly activities and meetings our church is involved in. We ask that you would bless and resource Helen's new endeavour with renewed well-being on Graven Hill. We ask your healing, comfort and peace on all in our fellowship who are ill, injured, bereaved, or suffering in ways we are unaware of. Finally, let us call out the names of those people and situations close to our own hearts.
We thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. And we ask in the precious name of Jesus that you would answer them. Amen. We're going to close our service with, uh, with the final song, which says, Build Your Kingdom. And, and as we sing this, let's think about God's kingdom in all its elements. It's about what God intends, what God always wanted to happen with his creation actually being fulfilled. So we pray, build your kingdom here. Thank you, Steve. Again, if you're able and willing to stand, do join us as we sing together. It's been lovely to be together in person again. Do, uh, do stay around and chat as much as you, uh, you're able to. We don't have refreshments, and we're not going to have them for a few weeks yet. We're um, just working out our rotors and uh, 
uh, we're taking things. We don't want to strain people too much, but uh, hopefully in a few weeks' time we shall have them. Um, but as we go our, our way, here's the blessing for us. May God, who established the dance of creation, who marveled at the lilies of the field, who transforms chaos to order, lead us to transform our lives and the church to reflect God's glory in creation. Amen.